That's a good question. Uh, what our study does is an exploration. Uh, it's not clear why we're seeing it seeing a reversal of the gender gap. Um, that's why it's a question we should be trying to engage in more studies to understand better. What we are, are observing is that if you look at the Canadian censuses um, for Ontario or for Canada, uh, what you're observing is that for the uh, cohorts that are born prior to 1960, there are more men graduating uh, or have bachelor's degrees or higher um, than women. And it was around the late 1950s, 1960s, where we start to see that gap emerging. Gap started slowly and we're now, if you look at the Ontario data, we're at about a 10 to 11 percentage point gap in terms of university participation rates. If you look at any post-secondary uh, degree, certificate, any type of education outside of, or beyond high school, that gap actually started uh, more with the uh, uh, Canadians who were born after 1940. So we are seeing this gap, gap um, it's growing. Why is it happening? We're not really sure. I mean, what we're observing in the report is that it appears as though th it has to do with the decision to go on to university. It's not what happens after the application is put into place. So the concept of tracking. One of the things we do in, in Ontario schools and is done in many schools is that even be before grade nine, but let's start with grade nine. Usually that's the first year of high school. Students start getting a lot of choice in the courses. So if they start taking a math course, they can decide to take, do they want to take an academic course? Do they want to take an applied course? Do they want to take some other type of course? As you start making those decisions, so as the students start making those decisions, that then affects the courses they can take down the road. So if at the age of 12, 13, 14, students start making decisions and don't understand the implications of those decisions when they're 17, 18, 19, 20, they could end up in a stream or in a track that makes it much more difficult for them to go on to university. That is one of the things that is coming out in our study. Um, we are observing that there are more girls taking the academic version of math um, than boys. And so one of the things we want to explore further is what about the other types of courses? What happens after grade 9? What happens into grade 10? What happens into grade 11? Is there something we can be thinking about from a policy standpoint, from a schooling standpoint, to try to encourage more boys to be taking uh, the academic track of courses. If we don't try to understand better what, what is causing this gender gap and then try to encourage policies, encourage schooling options that, will, that encourage effectively both men and women to go on to university or go on to post-secondary education. Um, I should make a point, post-secondary education, be it college or university. Um, the problem that we have is that Canada is moving or has moved into an, a knowledge economy where we are requiring more and more skills to be able to get well-paid jobs. And so if we don't address this problem, we're going to start seeing bigger shortages in our employment sector and men will be ending up doing worse than women uh, as a result.